Well, yogis, welcome to the practice today. Please take any seated posture that you like. Roll your shoulders back and find a comfortable seated position. Maybe you're at home and you're on a pillow. Maybe you're seated on your mat. You can be kneeling as well. Whatever is comfortable for you. Let's shut the eyes down and start to make a mind-body connection. Hearing the sound of our inhales and exhales. And starting to let go of all other tasks that we have and thoughts. Setting aside one hour of our day to work on ourselves and to work on our emotional, mental, physical well-being. Inhale, take a deep stretch. Reach the arms up. Left hand reaches for right elbow. Grab the elbow and let the hands just slide down the back. Continue to sit up really tall. Chin is nice and level. Gaze is nice and level. And we're trying to bring the front body in so we're not letting those front ribs stick forward. One more breath in. Reach up, look up. And exhale, let the hands fall away. Let's try again, another deep breath in, reach up. This time, right hand goes for the left elbow. Let the hands come down the back. And just finding our breath, sitting up really tall, feel the rooting through the sit bones, helping you lift up through the crown of your head. Inhale, reach up, look up, softly opening the throat. And when you exhale, just hold forward to your comfort level. Hands can catch. And if you want to, elbows to the floor, body leaning forward, back nice and long. So try not to round excessively through the shoulders here. Make sure that you're sitting with your chest nice and broad, and then just go to where your body can fold there, allowing the knees and the hips to open. Good, take a breath in and sit up, picking up the legs as well, and let's get down the length of our mat. Finding child's pose, so from tabletop, just sitting softly back. Belly can rest on the thighs, forehead coming to the mat, and we're gonna let the hips sink back and down, finding that stretch through the arms and the hips. I got a Charlie horse going right now on the top of my foot, so. You know, as you move through your yoga practice, sometimes you just have to make little adjustments. You have to work with what's going on with you <laughs> at the time. Let's reconnect with the sound of your breath. Find your inhales and exhales. Let your forehead rest on the mat. I'm holding my head up so you can hear me and I don't sound too echoey. So go ahead and let your forehead just rest. Whatever you've been worried about today, whatever kind of checklist you think you aren't getting done today, let's just let that go. Take a breath in, lift up, move forward, bringing the shoulders over the wrists, tuck your toes, downward facing dog as we move back. Starting to work the body into the shape and just slowly cooperating with downward facing dog, pedaling the feet. Feet and hands are hip distance apart. Thumbs are pointing in towards one another. Fingers are fanned out. And we're trying to just open the sit bones, draw the navel up towards the spine, keep the back nice and straight. So you'll see us returning to downward dog over and over and over in a practice. And you can tell I'm pretty tight right now. My knees are bent, so that's okay, but you wanna have a nice long back. So make sure that you're not absorbing straight legs and rounding up through your upper back, but instead, you're pressing those sit bones back, and if you need to bend the knees, let the forgiveness happen there. Look at that space between your thumbs, and we're gonna step the feet there, walking little steps or one giant step. Enter forward fold with an exhale, just letting the body go. If it feels good to sway, let that happen. Yeah, so I'm coming to you from Boise, Idaho, the best place on the world to live. <laughs> And wherever you are, I hope you're having a fabulous day. Uh, this practice comes to you in the middle of the COVID pandemic. So 
I hope you're healthy and well. So far, our household has been. Take a deep breath in, root down through your feet. Inhale, rise all the way up to standing. Reach and touch the sky. And in this room, I can touch my ceiling. <laughs> Exhale, bring hands to heart center. Take a breath in, reach up. We're beginning our sun salutation now. Upward salute. Exhale, forward fold. As you inhale, lift up. We want to grow nice and long in our half standing fold. And when we exhale, we're going to step back, planting those palms into a high plank. Now, we're prepping for our Chaturanga. We're going to try Chaturanga in our low variation first time. So keeping the body nice and straight. Inhale, knees to the floor. And exhale, body to the floor. Elbows are tight to the butt sides. We're going to inhale, take a soft cobra. Exhale, take a downward facing dog. Press back. Again, we're going to just kind of talk our body into downward facing dog. Every time we get here, we're encouraging those heels a little lower to the floor. We're trying to stretch a little more through the armpits. It's not an automatic posture, so just give it time. Inhale, look forward and lift the toes, soften your knees, exhale, step forward. Breathe in and up to a half standing fold. Breathe out, let it go. Inhale, rise all the way up, touch the sky. Exhale, bring hands to heart center. Try again, take a deep breath in, upward salute. When you exhale, if you need to bend your knees, let that happen, keep the back nice and long. Breathe in, find a half standing fold. Breathe out, step back to plank position. Inhale, tighten your tummy. Exhale, strong through the core as we lower shoulders to elbow height, and then roll onto the tops of our feet for up dog. Exhale, press back. Downward facing dog. This is where you can just let everything go. Like I said, we'll come back to this posture often, so just ah, let it all out during this pose. Inhale, pick up your gaze. Exhale, step, walk, or jump to the top of your mat. Breathe in, flat back. Exhale, fold over. Inhale, root to rise, press down through strong feet, come all the way up to standing. And exhale, hands come to heart center. One more time through, take a deep breath in. Exhale, forward fold. Breathe in, half standing. Exhale, step back. Plank, and we're gonna try and keep that same exhalation, carrying it into our chaturanga. Up dog, make sure you're on the tops of your feet and your knees are floating above the mat. Exhale, downward facing dog. Yeah, so far so good. Look to your hands, step walker, jump to your hands. Breathe in, flat back, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, upward salute. Exhale, hands come to heart center, pause. Celebrate the energy from your sun salutation, the warmth that's starting to come into your body. The preparation for the rest of the practice. We're going to get into a little more power now. We're going to get into a little more strength. So just take a moment here. Maybe even close your eyes. Tuck your tailbone forward slightly. Pull the front ribs in. Big breath in. Reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half standing. Exhale, just walk your feet softly back to downward facing dog. Now bring your feet close together so that your feet are almost touching or are touching near the back of your mat. And when you inhale, take your right leg up to three-legged dog. Exhale, bend that knee and bring it through to a warrior one posture. Back heel meets the mat. We're gonna inhale and rise up, warrior one. Right leg is forward, left leg is back. And we've got this left heel actually connecting down to the mat. So make sure that you've rotated from here to here for your warrior one posture. Nice breath in and when you exhale, let's go to warrior two. Sinking a little bit deeper. <laughs> Finding openness through the hips. Inhale, turn your right palm up and reach forward, reach back for reverse warrior. Feel free to catch the leg or let that arm dangle. So if you're here for power, that arm can hang behind you or it can kind of wrap your waist, which is sort of an in-between. Take a deep breath in and when you exhale, move forward, side angle pose. Right elbow to right knee, left arm extends over the top. And we're gonna turn our gaze and look at the sky. See if you can bend a little more into the front knee. 
dropping that front thigh towards the ground, really reaching long over the top. Beautiful. Anybody looking for power, just slip that bottom arm away, reaching both arms overhead for a couple breaths here. Come on, you can do this for a few breaths. Nice. Take that top arm. Draw a giant circle, hands come to the floor, and we're gonna pivot the back heel up off the mat for lizard pose. So I want both of my arms to the inside of the right leg. I'm gonna keep the hips fairly high, keep that back leg nice and active. See if I can slowly work down to the left elbow for a little bit of a stretch. <laughs> Maybe the right elbow as well. Now if that's too far, be nice. Listen to your hips and knees, don't go too far. You're welcome to stay up on the hands for lizard pose. Anybody feeling really ambitious today? Sneak that shoulder under the knee, grab the ankle for the wrap, and bind this pose with a little bit of power. Yeah. Unwind as you like from wherever you are, finding hands again, and feet for a high plank. And hold your high plank. So watch those hips, don't let the hips pike. That's when you know you're using hip flexors over abdominals. Bring it down and make the abs do the work. Hang on, one more breath. Set knees to the floor and press back. Quick little child's pose. Quick little child's pose. Come back to the forearms <laughs> and pop the hips up into the air for dolphin pose. Yeah, let's see here. We can stay nice and wide in dolphin this first time. I'm doing a little bit of a rocking action here. I'm trying to encourage my shoulders to open as I'm pressing my chest through the window of my arms, pressing my chest back towards my thighs. Dolphin is challenging because it requires you to be strong in the shoulders at the same time that you're asking your shoulders to stretch deeply. So it's a real challenge. We're just gonna exit out of that nice and easy, lowering the knees to the floor, and then popping up to downward facing dog. Let's flush everything out with a vinyasa. This is a vinyasa if you're new to yoga. We inhale to plank, exhale to chaturanga, inhale to up dog, and exhale to downward facing dog. Bring your feet close together. This time we're gonna stretch the left leg high, three-legged dog inhale. Exhale, lunge it through warrior one posture. Back heel meets the mat. We're gonna inhale, reach up, stretch up. Now my heart rate's up. Now that heart's thumping. Take an exhale, open wide to warrior two. Yeah, always trying to celebrate. Can we get that bottom or this front thigh parallel to the floor? Inhale, turn your left palm up, reach forward, reach back. Hold on if you like. Don't hold on if you like. It's your practice, it's your body. You do what feels best to you. And if you're going to gaze up, don't clench through your jaw. Just keep everything nice and soft through the face. Take a deep breath in and when you exhale, lean forward, elbow to the knee and stretch over the top for side angle pose. I'm gonna try and look with my gaze. Every time you can find one focal point or a brishti, then it, you're making sure that you're just kind of quieting the mind. Slip that bottom arm away if you like. Reach both arms overhead just for a few breaths. Find that power down through your legs and core. Draw a giant circle with that top arm. Hands meet the mat. Back heel up. Lizard pose. Working both arms to the inside of your left leg. You might be able to get down onto that right elbow. You might be able to just, you know, Grab a pillow or a book or a block from your house and get sort of down to the floor. That still works and you can let the back knee drop if you need to. So little modifications all along the way. I'm gonna go for the bind. Anybody wanting to join me, take a couple breaths here. It's fun to try and look forward and then maybe also try and look back. <laughs> totally changes the pose. Unwind as you like, we're making our way to plank. There it is, nice high plank. Give it a breath or two. Yeah, could we go straight to dolphin from here? Now, if you need a little child's pose, take a quick little child's pose. If you can press back to downward dog and lower to forearms, come immediately to dolphin and make a choice, maybe walking the feet closer, walking the feet together, and just plank around with sending one leg up, maybe even lifting tippy toe to heel, tippy toe to heel. <sighs> 
You can hear it in my voice. This is a lot of work. So let it be. Yoga makes us strong. We're trying not to fight that. We're trying to be strong and open and flexible. You're looking forward at your thumbs. Yeah. Everybody celebrate with a child's pose. Knees to the mat, sit back, forehead to the floor, and bring the back of your hands by the sides of your feet. My heart is thumping. We're just kind of harnessing that moon energy, letting it go for a second. Ah, stay in child's pose for two or three more breaths, or move forward and take a vinyasa. Your choice. We're just sneaking a push-up in here, so if you're not interested in a push-up today, skip it. Awesome. Everybody up, everybody to downward facing dog. Bring your feet close together. Inhale your right leg high, three-legged dog. Exhale, lunge it through, crescent lunge. We're gonna rise right back up like we were, but this time you'll notice my back heel is off the floor. So, and I'm not gonna let that back heel be kinda lazy. I'm spiking that back heel up like I mean it with a nice active set of quads there on my left leg. So crescent lunge, big breath in. Exhale, let your hands come to clasp behind your back or to just reach back if you cannot connect the hands. We're gonna softly work a back bend and work open here through the throat, just gazing up. Take a breath in, scoop, reach, exhale, revolve. So I see people twist the wrong direction a lot. Make sure that you're looking over that bent thigh as you're twisting your revolved crescent lunge. Take a breath in, scoop, reach, exhale, hands come to the floor. Leave the feet where they are, bring the hips up and back, and try to straighten both of your legs into wide pyramid. Folding it to the front thigh. Let's do that again two more times. Inhale, lunge. Exhale, work back. Try and press your left heel down. One more time, and we're gonna take this right hip, try and press that right hip back from the outer side of the hip. There it is. Ooh, it's nice and intense. Bend forward and open up to the left side of your mat for wide fold. Hello. <laughs> so legs are straight, toes are slightly inwards. We're finding a really long spine and we're just gonna let everything kind of hang. Nice little inversion here. Inversions are very calming for the body. They sort of reset the mind, settle us into a focus. Feel free to stay there. If you're having kind of a crazy day, just stay upside down. If you wanna come back to a little more power, lift up halfway and start to work samurai lunges. So I'm looking at you backwards, hello. Just lunging from side to side, hands on the floor or hands at heart center. Either one works, you choose. And you wanna kinda of turn your toes towards the corners of your mat so that you're lunging those knees in the same direction as your toes. And I'm not really counting. I don't really care how many of these I do. When I'm ready, I'm into the work and I'm gonna sit into goddess. So let me turn around <laughs> so you can see me. Toes turn out, heels turn in, and come into goddess pose. Have a deep squat, a deep sit as much as you can. And you'll notice the tendency is to lean forward and push your hips back. So try to do the opposite of that. Scoop the hips forward, stack the shoulders over your hips. You got it? Stay there, don't move. <laughs> I'm gonna join you. Everybody, one more breath. And we're on our way up to temple. Just straighten the legs and as you fall open, bend back into your right leg to warrior two. And once you've got that and you're making sure that your right toes are facing the front of your mat, you're gonna inhale your right leg straight, lean forward, and grab the shin for triangle pose. Left hand reaching to the sky, really looking up, finding your breath. Another nice calming pose. If you're having a hard time balancing, look at the floor. No problemo. Nice. Let's take a vinyasa. 
Bend into your front knee, plant the palms, step back and lower through your push-up. Make sure in that push-up that your elbows are brushing right past your ribs. So we don't want the elbows to poke out to the side. When we're lowering our push-up, it's basically a tricep push-up. So if you're familiar with those, that's what chaturanga is, a tricep push-up. Bring your feet close together. Inhale your left leg high, exhale, lunge it through, crescent lunge, back heel spiked up off the mat. Nice and strong, breath in, and we're sinking as we exhale. We're also letting the arms fall away. Clasp behind the back, inhale, open. Open the throat, open the chest, open the shoulders, open your heart. Look up if you can, challenge your balance. Inhale, reach, exhale, twist. We're looking over that left leg. So you wanna make sure that you're looking over the bent thigh in front of you. If you're looking this way, it's easy. So people love that, love it when we do it that way, but we're twisting, we're revolving. So find the twist. Scoop that back arm under and up. Release hands to the floor, leave the feet where they are nice and wide and press the front leg straight. Wide pyramid. Inhale, lunge forward. And exhale, press back. So just move at your own pace here. You might find you like the lunge more than the press. Maybe you need a little more time in one or the other. That's fine. Inhale, lunge. Exhale, press. Work the outer hip. This one over here. Work that back behind you. Good. Lunging into your front knee, softening just a little bit and turning to face the right side of your mat. Take a wide fold, maybe try something different this time. Grabbing elbows and swaying, grabbing a hold of your ankles and pulling the body longer. The one thing we wanna avoid is rounding through the shoulders. So if you feel like you need to round because you can't touch the floor, I want you to keep your back long and bend your knees instead and then find the shape by taking, again, just like we would through downward dog, softening through the knees, opening through the sit bones and keeping the back really long and the flexibility will come with time. Stay upside down and keep stretching unless you want some samurai lunges and then get up and get on the move. One of my favorite things to do if I'm having a really powerful day is to stay low and slide side to side. So really making those legs work. And this is not for everyone. If you have you know, touchy knees or sore knees, you wanna be nice and tall and nice and high. You can even skip these little lunges, totally works. Everybody though is going to one of my favorite poses, goddess pose, so turn your toes out and your heels in with your feet really wide and sit. Yeah, if you want a couple extra pulses, you can practice sinking the pulses, stay in your goddess pose, don't cheat it, don't cheat it. Look at me from the side, tuck, sit back, draw the knees back, pull from your glutes, squeeze from the glutes to get the knees to open up. Whew. All right, all right, all right, I hear you. Here's your break. Inhale, rise to temple. Exhale, lunge forward over that left leg again. Warrior two. Make sure, have you turned your left toes to the front of your mat? If you have, you're ready for triangle. Straighten, lean, and exhale, fold. Settle into your breath. Hear the beating of your heart, Woo. and a little bit of cardio, <laughs> and just feel the stretch. See if you can roll this top hip open just a little bit more. Push up or no push up, by the way, you can always skip them. So you could go straight to downward dog, but I'm taking the push up, elbows brushing past my ribs. Inhale up dog, exhale down dog. Bring your feet close together. When you inhale, sweep your right leg high. Exhale, lunge it through. Stay down, stay low. Left hand stays on the mat. We're gonna twist into that thigh for a revolve side angle. And I'm gonna look up. So this twist starts at my tailbone, goes all the way up through the crown of the head. And just breathing here, keeping that back leg nice and active and strong. Good, let's see if we can balance today. So starting to prep, finding that Balance through the feet, and I just wanna see if my right hand will lightly tap my left leg behind me, and then I'm gonna come over the top again. That's where I began, and I'm gonna do that two more times. So the goal here is not to rush. Can you keep it slow? 
Can you make it float like it's moving through water rather than kind of jumping to the top and falling to the bottom? Can it be smooth? Can you look up? Oh, that's the extra challenge. That's the one that's gonna make me lose it. Cartwheel, both hands to the floor and drop your back knee. Beautiful work. Untuck those toes. Take a scoop in low lunge. Make sure you feel like you're squeezing your thighs in towards one another. Look up if you like. Exhale, hands come to the floor. Shift back, half monkey up. Notice how I'm not sitting down, keeping the hips nice and high, just finding that length through the front leg. Ooh, lunge back into your right leg. Drag the back leg in halfway. Pop the hips high in the air and straighten the legs for pyramid. You might need a minute here just to kind of shift and work into it. Lift up a little and then fold. If you're feeling really tight, like you can't touch the floor, try to get up on the shin and, you know, your couch close to you or something. The benefit here is keeping the legs straight. Now, I'm not talking about a locked out knee, just a really straight, strong leg. And then folding into that leg with your heels grounded as much as you can. If it's super hard, bring that back foot even closer. That'll ease it up a little bit. Bending into your right knee, we're off for warrior three. Start to float the back leg and float the upper body, everything parallel to the floor. Nice, strong, engaged core. Don't let the left hip lift too high and just find your power here, floating in space. Thinking about half moon pose, starting to connect your right hand to the floor or the block. Open up your body to the left side of your mat, stacking shoulders and hips into half moon pose, driving your left heel really, really high behind you and turning your toes out to the side. Now I'm gonna see if I can land this right back into warrior two. You're welcome to put hands and feet on the floor and then step to your warrior two. You do as you like, ah, there it is. Beautiful job. I'm gonna take as few steps as possible into my side plank. So that's setting my right hand down and just slipping my right leg back to side plank. Find it, open it, reach. Choose any variation you like, lifting that top leg for power, grabbing that top toe, whatever works for you. We're gonna power through this side plank, remembering it can be a lot easier with your knee on the floor. So choose that option if you need it. Three, two, and one, slowly to your downward facing dog. Press back, here comes your break, here's your relief. Inhale your right leg high, this is the one we've been lifting and moving all along. Return it again to the sky, and split the legs apart as you carry it through to pigeon pose. How you doing? You good? Fold yourself over. Go to wherever it feels good for you. If you wanna really, really let go, just lay all the way down. You'll notice in this pose that the tendency is to kind of roll out here to the right side of your hip. So as much as you can, bring it over, press into the left side. It's almost like you wanna lay your pelvis flat on the floor. And some of you might be able to get there already. We're just trying to encourage that. Thinking about how we're gonna get up and stand up. Tuck your back toe behind you, press into your palms, hands or shoulder width apart. We're gonna carry that right leg right back up to where it started in three-legged dog, and then we're gonna lunge it through to crescent lunge. Rise up. I'm gonna keep my arms reaching overhead this time as I go back to warrior three pose. So watch me take a little curtsy dip and a launch into warrior three. And I'm gonna try and keep the arms overhead as much as I can, just really stretching the body out, working for that power and balance. Straight as a needle without bending through the back, I'm gonna work on slowly standing myself up to mountain pose. And I love to celebrate just setting that foot on the floor like slow as I possibly can. Reset, face any direction you like. Stand on your right leg and find tree. <sighs> yeah. If you want to reach down, grab the ankle, bring it a little higher. Mm -hmm. 
Press into the heel rather than gripping the thigh with the toes. Maybe grow your branches. You can go anywhere you feel like going today. Now I'm going to see if I can get to dancer's pose without setting my left foot down. So just starting to prep, trying to stay on the right leg, bringing the left knee forward. Ooh, maybe it's going to happen today, maybe it's not. Catching the inside arch of my left foot with my left hand and opening to dancer's pose. Steady your balance, steady your gaze. And try to exit the pose as slowly and as smoothly as you got in. Celebrate. Breath in. Exhale. Forward fold. Grab elbows. Hang heavy. Sway for a second. Whew. Good work. That was a long ways to go. Let's hit the reset button. Take a breath in. Flat back. Exhale. Step back. Find your push up. Lower down through your exhale. Inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog. Pause. Downward dog and feet close together. This time we move to the left hand side for everything we just did. Inhale, left leg high, three legged dog. Exhale, lunge it through. Stay down, stay low. Right hand stays on the floor and we're gonna reach up for revolved side angle. Paravritta. Parshva Konasana. Paravritta Parshva Konasana. Revolved side angle pose. Okay, can you balance? Can you be strong? Can you move through water? Can you tap your left hand to your right thigh? And then return. <laughs> slowly, 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 don't rush. I can see my chickens through my back window. They're throwing off my balance, picking through my grass. That's two. Okay, one more slowly up. See if you can find it, tap it. Good job, cartwheel hands to the floor. Drop your back knee, uncurl those toes and take a little celebration here in a low lunge. Squeezing in like you're gonna bring the thighs together and exhaling, letting hands fall away to the floor. Straighten that left leg as much as you can to get a nice deep hamstring stretch. As you shift back, notice I brought my hips over my knee. Half monkey god. Ardha Hanumanasana. Ardha Hanumanasana, half monkey god pose. Lunge again, pop the hips in the air. As you slide the back foot in at least halfway, notice how my feet really are not that far apart. And if you've got tight hamstrings, Bringing them closer will help. Straighten out the hips, straighten out the pelvis so that your pelvis is square to the top of your mat, square to the floor. That means you're gonna to have to move that left outer hip back towards the back wall a little bit. Fold as much as you can. Those of you who are able, tuck your chin right up under your kneecap. Mm -hmm. But don't round through the shoulders. Keep the back nice and long. We're gonna lunge forward, finding our warrior three. So as you're ready, finding warrior three pose, straightening the back leg, floating, bringing the chest parallel to the floor, floating. Nice engagement through the core. We're gonna try not to lift that right hip too high. Thinking about keeping our balance, thinking about opening and stacking this pose into half moon. Now, I used to block and if you don't have one, you can grab you know, something tall around your house, something stable, but if you don't have it, get up on your spider fingers like this and open your half moon pose. So there's an advantage to the block. It makes it easier to balance, but the, there is an advantage to having your hand on the floor. It makes it easier to lift that back foot higher than your hip, which is where you want it to be. So uh, I think they both have benefits. I'm gonna see if I can land this into warrior two, stretching my heart forward as I bend into that left knee a lot and let the back foot carry me softly to warrior two. Ha, we did it, success, good job. Sometimes you gotta reset yourself, so just find it, okay? And then left hand to the floor with as little effort as possible, side plank. Remember, your side plank can be here, okay? So if you're not having a super powerful day, well then bring the knee to the floor and remember, you can always open this up, find a little more strength 
empower lifting the top leg. Yeah, Vashistasana, side plank pose. Bring it slowly to downward facing dog. Press back, left leg up, left leg through, pigeon. Lunge and fold as you like. So, some people have a really hard time with pigeon. If you've got tight hips, that'll be your issue. You can always just bring it into more of a hurtling pigeon and then fold from there, which is totally, totally fine. Most everyone can do this variation. So just modify that. If that's where you need to be today, it's absolutely okay. Reconnect with your breath. If you haven't been paying attention to your inhales or exhales at all, just go back to your breath. And we're on the rise. Hands under shoulders, tuck your back toe, send that left leg up to three-legged duck. Lunge it through, bringing the foot to your hands. Back heel up off the mat, and I'm gonna try to keep my arms overhead as I carry this pose into warrior three. So that's the challenge. Can I keep reaching overhead, engaging through the glutes? In warrior three, it doesn't really matter if you flex the foot or point the toe but you want to commit to one or the other because it makes you really strong. Try to stay straight as a needle as you slowly stand up to mountain pose. Okay, and I lost it. You might have lost it too. It happens. Let it go if you did. Big breath in. Standing on the left leg, tree pose. Place your foot either above or below the knee joint. Doesn't really matter where as long as you're not pressing into the knee joint. Doesn't really matter where your arms go, so whatever feels good for you. If you feel really dancey, do something beautiful, it's absolutely fine. Let's get into dancer's pose. We're gonna try not to touch that foot down if we can help it. Just take your time getting in. We want the knees side by side, pressing into this front hip rather than opening it to the side Balancing as we kick the foot into the hand. Exiting just as slowly as we got in. And taking a forward fold. Good job, big breath in. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, step back to downward dog or take your push up, your choice. Okay, no pressure from your neighbor. No pressure from whoever's watching you at home. Your cat or your dog, they're not doing your yoga. They don't get to tell you what to do. Hips to the sky, just take a second. Pedal here and breathe. Feet come close together. We're gonna inhale the right leg high, exhale, lunge it through. We're back to our crescent lunge. You'll notice we repeat this pose a lot. However, we're gonna carry this to eagle pose. So take a little curtsy, stretch your heart forward to carry your left leg over the top of your right leg and wrap, eagle wrap. Now, if you can wrap your toes around the back of your calf, go for that, but if that's not working, that's okay. And then your left arm goes under your right for Gabudasana or eagle pose. Just give it a second. Play with it. See what changes if you sit back or if you sit deep or lean forward. What's harder for you? What's more of a challenge tonight? Challenge yourself. And I'm gonna try and keep my arms wrapped as I step my left foot back to crescent lunge. So I'm just thinking about that. Can I keep my arms bound and slowly float that left foot back into crescent lunge? Did you hear that land? That landed a little, <laughs> that landed a little heavy. Oh well, take a second here. Stretch up, reach up. Good, hands to the floor. Let's lean forward a little bit and bend our right knee a lot and bend our left knee a lot. Okay, so can you see this right leg? I'm standing on it with it bent. I'm gonna just kind of extend everything straight and then I'm gonna bend a lot and this time I'm actually gonna try and tap my left knee to the back of my right calf. See that? Use your fingertips for balance. Extend and kick, bend and tap. Inhale, extend and kick, exhale, tap. You're gonna to start to feel a beautiful heat 
working into that right rear end. So take your time. You can do as many of these as you want to do, just depending on how much work you feel like. And when you start to say, I cannot do any more of those, take it up to a quick standing split and let it just fall away to a nice wide forward fold. And holy moly, just grab elbows and sway. <sighs> I didn't have very many of those in me tonight. I, uh, that's all I got. I did my best. I don't even know how many of that was. I try not to count when I do yoga. I try to just go with it. I try not to count. Good work. Let's take a little crane while we're here. So as you like, crane pose. And if you're not familiar with arm balances, you can watch once. Yeah, maybe come back another day and give this a try. Hands out in front of you, spread your fingers wide. Pop up onto the toes, keep your buns high in the air. We're gonna to start to shift the weight forward into the triceps. Balancing knees on the triceps, looking up, bringing the feet up off the floor slowly, pushing into the fingertips to keep us from tipping forward. Bakasana. Beautiful step, step, downward facing dog. Nicely done. Inhale your left leg high from three-legged dog and lunge it through. <sighs> Just hit the reset button. You might need a second here before you move to eagle. So think about carrying your right leg over the left. Have a seat in eagle. Right arm goes under the left, eagle wrap. Which is harder for you? To sit way back or to sit forward? Maybe try a little bit of both. Challenge yourself tonight. Ask yourself to do something you don't wanna do. Ask yourself to find a shape that kind of irritates you a little bit. And then just breathe with it. Just settle into that irritation. Yeah. Maybe keep your arms wrapped if you need them for balance, no sweat. And then move yourself slowly back on a bent knee, back to crescent lunge. I just can't land anything on the left tonight, maybe. That's what's going on with that. Big breath in, reach up. Exhale, hands come to the floor. We're preparing for those curtsy dips, okay? You choose how many you wanna do. Just balance off your fingertips. Extend and inhale. Exhale, bend and tap. Now you don't have to actually tap, right? So if that's too deep for you, hurt your knees, or it's just too much work, that's fine. If you love these and you want a nice round behind, tap way low, almost to the outside of your calf, right? Almost to the outside of your shin. So this is up to you, how many you do, and you wanna really come up and find that full extension. So extend, yes, bend and tap. Oh my goodness, that's it. Okay, this is the one, standing split. I'm just gonna find it as high as I can and let it fall away to forward fold. Oh, wider feet, grab elbows. Sway. You can take another little crane. What do you want to do tonight? Stay in this forward fold. You want to take a little crane. You could come into garland. That'd be fine. No problem with garland. Turn your toes out, heels in. Have a little sit. Or fly again. Maybe you feel like a different arm balance. I tell people when they take my class, you just do what you want, right? Sometimes I don't do a pose you were hoping I was gonna do. Well, do it on your own. You do what you want. Works for me. Nice. Can we finish with one final vinyasa? So whatever you're in, make your way to your high plank and lower down through your push-up. Inhale to your up dog. Exhale to your downward facing dog. Guys, nicely done. Bring your knees to the mat. Have a seat as you swing those legs out from underneath you. All right, lean back, sit up tall, grab the back of your knees and balance boat pose. Strong for our core, good for our core. Hold on if you need to, let go if you can. Straighten legs if you're finding that option and the arms overhead, doable for you tonight. So we want this to be challenging, we don't want it to be too hard. Just finding that as we can. Yeah. 
slowly, slowly bringing it back. Tippy toes to the floor. Butterfly the knees wide into bound angle pose. Bound angle. Let's take a nice round bound angle. Bound angle B. Baddha Konasana B. I think we've earned it. It's totally fair. <laughs> Good. Let's stretch a little bit for a second. So bring the legs straight out in front of you into staff. You want to really put on your corset. That's what I always say, right? Like you're going on a Titanic. Tighten that corset up and keep your back straight. So don't let this fall into the back of your pelvis. Don't let it scoop. Sit up tall. And if you need to bend your knees, bend them. Big breath in and exhale, fold yourself over. Staff pose. Nice, you do not have to touch the feet. You don't have to grab the feet. Hands could be on the floor. Try again, big breath in. Let's see if we can go a little deeper. Take a breath in, rise up. Let me face forward for you so you can see a little better. <laughs> Take your left leg over your right leg. And sit up tall. You want to make sure you're connecting sit bones into the floor with this pose. And anyone who wants to, you can bend both legs. Just make sure you're not sitting on the heel. Big breath in. Reach your right arm high. And either bring the right elbow in front of the thigh or hug the left leg in. Use your left arm for support behind you. Now you can just kind of recline this back, nice and soft, or you can do what I like to do, which is sit up really tall and take the twist. Take the twist like you mean it. Eye gaze is nice and level. Keep your chin nice and level. Let's see if we can get into cow face. Now, whether your um, bottom leg is bent or whether your bottom leg is straight, just pick up your top leg and stack your knees as much as you can. Don't worry if you can't stack them a lot and lean forward, creep forward. Ooh, I'm really tight tonight. So if you're tight like me, that might be, you might just really like having the front leg out in front of you. Trade all that, let's reverse. Straighten your legs, give them a little shake, yeah? Left leg stays straight, this time the right leg goes over the top. Feel free to bring it into full half Lord of the Fishes, just make sure that you can sit, both sit bones on the ground. So if you notice you're kind of leaning off or you're sitting on that heel, you wanna bring it down. Inhale, reach, and exhale, twist as you like. Find your power, press down through your sit bones to lift up a little taller through your vertebrae and out through the crown of your head. And use your right arm as a support. Bring your chin over your shoulder and breathe. It was a fabulous stretch for your lower back. And a great pose for your internal organs for digestion. Exhale, unwind, stack. Cow face, you know, sometimes cow face, if you're like almost there, not quite rock forward, sit back and then just let the weight of your body move forward. And you'll notice I can get a little deeper on this side. So everybody's like that or better at one side than the other. It's really common. My goodness, great work tonight, you guys, or this morning. When are you doing this practice? Whenever you're doing this practice, good job. Unwind, untangle. Let's make our way to our back. Hug knees into your chest, wind removing pose, and just rock a little bit side to side. So finding your back massage, working out all the kinks. It doesn't really matter which leg. Let's cross one leg over the other, ankle to knee for eye of the needle, you wanna reach through this window and just lay the head and shoulders back and try and pull the thigh in towards your chest. The 
This is a good time to close your eyes. Start to slow your breath down. Good work. Let's change sides. Just unwind, untangle, reverse. Reach through the window and pull it in. As I leave you at the end of the practice today, I want you to just stay here on your back for as long as you like. So eventually I'll be quiet, yeah? And if you want to, you can stay here for five or 10 or 20 minutes, whatever feels good for you. Let's unwind that and grab both feet, happy baby pose. What do I always say about happy baby? The best thing about happy baby is that we're all doing it together because ain't nobody wanna do happy baby alone <laughs> or be watched doing this pose either. <laughs> Try and press your tailbone flat to the floor. Give it one final stretch. And then just release those feet. Let them fall to the floor. Straighten the legs. We're moving into corpse pose or Shavasana. So you want to take your feet apart and you want to let your toes kind of roll to the walls. And take your hands apart. Take your hands away from your hips. Turn your palms up. Shift around. Find that happy place where you can rest easy, you might even need to. If you're like me, you've got a generous backside. Sometimes I like to come up and really untuck the tailbone behind me so it can really relax. Have a nice neutral spine. Close your eyes. Listen to the sound of your breath. And make a conscious choice to lie absolutely still. So the beauty of this portion of the practice is the other side of yourself. Rather than the powerful, energetic, strong side of yourself, this is the side of you that has learned to be calm, that knows how to sit still in the middle of a storm. The side of you that can make a conscious choice not to move, not to open your eyes. Listen to the sound of your breath. And as you exhale, let your thoughts drift away. Breathing in easy and exhaling out tension, exhaling thoughts away, opening the mind. Rest happy into the floor as long as you like.